begin the first lecture of the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah. The book of Ezra was written by Ezra. Ezra was recorded between 456 BC and 444 BC. In verses 1 to 3 of today's passage, the king of Persia made a proclamation that the people of Judah return to Jerusalem. The first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, was 538 BC. However, this is only an estimated year. This was the year of Cyrus, king of Persia. This was the time Babylon and began his reign over the region. The word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah was fulfilled. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 11 says, This whole country will become a desolate wasteland, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon seventy years. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 10 says, This is what the Lord says. When seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. The Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that his prophecy would be fulfilled. Thus Cyrus made a proclamation to send the people of Judah taken into exile back to their land. Jeremiah's prophecy was fulfilled. The people of Judah completed 70 years of captivity. God looked after them to return. God looked after them and allowed them to return to their homeland. The prophecy that was spoken 70 years earlier was fulfilled. God let the people of Judah be taken captive by foreign nations when they sinned. When they repented and cried out to God, they were allowed to return to their homeland. This is the same today. When believers sin, God punishes them. When believers repent and become upright, God gives liberty and spiritual blessings. Seventy years earlier, King Nebuchadnezzar obstinately took the people of Judah captive. Seventy years later, King Cyrus was moved by God. Thus, he sent the people of Judah back to their land. Cyrus even sent back articles of the temple. God controlled the heart 
of the king. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1 says, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He directs it like a water course wherever he pleases. This is the same today. The powers of the devil are obstinate and wicked like King Nebuchadnezzar. The powers attempt to take believers captive and make them its slaves. However, pray and persevere, God will move the obstinate powers when its time is over, and God will help believers. God kills those who must be killed. God raises up those who must be raised up. God moves those who must be moved. God liberates his people and gives them freedom according to his will. Then when the time comes, God leads his people to blessings. King Cyrus, who received inspiration from God, gave thanks for God's grace in giving him all the kingdoms of the earth. Second, Cyrus made a proclamation so that he could immediately obey God's command to build a temple in Jerusalem. Third, Cyrus put hand into by making sacrifices of himself and his kingdom. If the Israelites returned to their land, Cyrus would lose laborers. If the people of Judah built the temple at Jerusalem and served God, they would not serve the gods of Cyrus' kingdom. King Cyrus knew that his dignity and his kingdom's prestige would fall, but he made the sacrifice and obeyed God's command. King Cyrus knew that the Lord God was the true God. Thus he blessed God's people. Then the king commanded the people to go to Jerusalem and build the temple. The king of Babylon made all his captives slaves the temple. However, King Cyrus sent the people of Judah back to Jerusalem and told them to build the temple. This was something that was completely unimaginable by man. This happened by the power of God. When the people of Judah were freed from Babylon, they said they thought they were dreaming. Psalm 126 verse 1 says, When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like men who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. In verses 4 to 6 of today's passage, the foreign peoples helped the people of Judah. 
when the people of Judah returned to helped them with articles of silver and gold and goods and livestock wherever they were. Cyrus also told the people to give gifts for the temple of God. These were people who once destroyed and burned the temple. Yet now, these people gave gifts and offerings for the construction of the temple. They also gave gifts to God. This was God's miracle. This was like the riddle that Samson told the Philistines. Judges chapter 14 verse 14 says, Out of the eater something to eat, out of the strong something sweet. Something to eat and something sweet came from an obstinate foreign king who was like a lion. That is why we must not be disheartened but pray when others persecute and mistreat us. We will gain something sweet and great rewards when we persevere until the end. In verse 5, it says that the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites were moved to go to Jerusalem. They were moved to go and build the temple in Jerusalem. At that time, they had settled in Babylon. They were also extremely familiar with Babylonian customs. They lived physically peaceful lives in Babylon. It would be difficult for them to go to the desolate Jerusalem and the temple. It was extremely difficult for the people to establish new lives. It would take them at least four months to get to Jerusalem. There would be dangers danger of attacks on their way to Jerusalem. There would be thieves and many obstacles. However, they did not think about these difficulties. They were moved by God and they immediately made a courageous decision with faith. They were like the Israelites during Moses' time. The Israelites who were enslaved in Egypt went out to go to the land of Canaan, a land they had never been to. Their faith was like the following. They upon God's promise with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They had faith that looked upon God's temple. They had faith that looked upon spiritual freedom and liberation rather than physical peace. They had faith 
to follow the guidance and inspiration of the Holy Spirit. When they stood in faith, their neighbors began to help. Their neighbors gave them articles of silver and gold and other goods. Their neighbors assisted them with livestock and valuable gifts. They also gave offerings to God. This shows that we do not need the help of others to stand in faith. When we obey God's commands and stand in faith, God will provide us with the things we need. Haggai chapter 2 verse 8 says, The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. When people rose up to build the temple, God gave them the things they needed through others. A similar thing happened to Jesus. When Jesus' family fled to Egypt right after he was born, God sent the three wise men to give them gifts of gold, frank incense, and myrrh. When Jesus entered the Jerusalem temple, a man gave his donkey to the Lord, a donkey that no one had ever sat on, wanted to hold the Lord's supper, John Mark offered his attic. A similar thing happened to Elijah as well. God sent Elijah to the Kirith Ravine for God's salvation movement. God gave Elijah bread and meat through ravens. Then God led Elijah to the home of the widow at Zarephath and helped him avoid famine and difficulties. Thus, we don't stop doing God's work because we don't have material goods. We don't do God's work because we don't have faith to obey and rise up. In verses 7 to 11, King Cyrus sends articles of the temple to Jerusalem. Seventy years earlier, King Nebuchadnezzar took all the holy articles from God's temple in Jerusalem. The king kept all the articles in the temple of his God. Now King Cyrus made a proclamation. He said that all the articles were to be returned to Jerusalem. In verse 8, Cyrus had the articles brought out by Mithridath, the treasurer. There were 5,400 articles that were brought out. The articles were taken to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah, to take back 
to Jerusalem. Sheshbazar was the Babylonian name for Zerubbabel. King Cyrus saw the article of the temple that were stored back to those who rose up to construct the temple. God sent Babylon to the Israelites when they sinned, and God disciples believers through foreign nations when they sin. However, when believers repent as they are disciplined, God protects them and restores them to their original state when the time comes. When the people rose up to construct the temple, God saved His chosen people with His power. Today, when pastors establish churches, people who once served idols repent and return to Jesus. We will continue with chapter 2. 2. About the first return of the exiles. In verses 1 to 2 are the names of the leaders who first returned to their homeland. The chapter lists the people who first returned from Babylon. The representatives were Zerubbabel and Jeshua. The people returned to Babylon at three different times. The first return was in 538 BC. They returned under the leadership of Zerubbabel. The second return was in 457 BC. They returned under the leadership of Ezra. The third return was in 444 BC. They returned under the leadership of Nehemiah. The names of the exiles who returned in the first are recorded in chapter 2. The names of those who returned in the second return are recorded in chapters 7 and 8. Zerubbabel was a political leader who led the people during the first return. Jeshua was a high priest and a religious leader. Jeshua is also known as Joshua. Nehemiah in chapter 2 is not Nehemiah who led the people out in the third return. The names are the same, but they were two different people. This is because the first return of the exiles took place in 538 BC and the third return took place in 444 BC. There was a war Mordecai in chapter 2 is also not Mordecai in the time of Esther. They are two different people. The first return of the exiles took place 
in 538 BC, but the reign of King Ahasuerus or King Xerxes in the time of Esther was in 485 BC. There was a 53 year gap. In verses 3 to 35 are the names of the men of the people of Israel and the numbers of their descendants who returned. The Israelites who were taken into exile returned with their families. Their family names are recorded and there were 33 families. So the Israelites were taken captive to Babylon, they lived with the people from their towns and with their families. Families were known by the names of their forefathers. They were also known by the names of their towns of residence. When the people returned to their homeland, they returned with their families. The numbers of family members were recorded. Verse 35 says that the descendants of Sena had the largest number of exiles who returned home. There were 3,630 descendants of Sena who returned. Verse 24 says that the descendants of Asmaveth had the smallest number of exiles who returned home. 42 Seth returned. Just as the Israelites recorded the number of those who left Babylon, the salvation movement of the New Testament church also has a similar system. This is written in Revelation chapter 7 verses 5 to 8. It says that there will be 12 tribes of saved believers. These 12 tribes are different from the 12 tribes in the Old Testament. This is because Jacob's fourth son, Judah, and his tribe are listed first. The tribe of Dan is missing from the list, and it lists the tribe of Manasseh. In the Old Testament times, there were physical tribes and families. In the New Testament times, there are sects and denominations according to how believers understand truth. Each believer is shaped by the truth that they recognize according to each system. Believers' characters are formed by the truth that they recognize. Believers who are shaped in character will receive appropriate rewards in heaven. People in the world live according to the things they understand. The characters of believers' faith are formed by the truth that they understand. They go to heaven with the spiritual characters that they live by in this world. Thus, those who understand the Bible gather 
together. Then they become one family and one tribe. That is why the truth of the Bible must be properly taught. We must also correctly understand and form our characters by God's word. 63. List the names of the priests, the Levites, and temple servants who returned. In the passage, four families of the priests returned. There were a total of 4,289 people. They flourished. Priests are people who commit to doing God's work. Hence, they may have flourished because of this. It is the same in the New Testament period. Believers who serve and do God's work will flourish and receive blessings. However, in verse 40, it says that nine families of the Levites returned. There were nine families, but only 341 people returned. The Levites were those who served in the temple. Because there was no temple in Babylon, they did not serve in the temple for 70 years. They were not to carry out their calling and duties in the temple. Therefore, they did not flourish, and a small number of them returned. Even though there was no temple in Babylon, the priests taught the people of Judah how to serve God. The priests continued their duties before the people. Thus, the people's hearts looked upon the temple of Jerusalem. The people wanted to give offerings to God. However, because there was no temple, the Levites were not able to fulfill their duties and serve. Thus, the Levites did not flourish, and hence a small number of them returned. Those who fulfill their duties and responsibilities before God will flourish. Today, their duties in the church will receive blessings. Those who neglect the, their duties like the Levites and do not work hard will grow weak in the work of life. They will not be able to lead other people to church. The Nethanim are listed in verse 43, and there were 35 families. The Nethanim were originally foreign people. They were Gibeonites. They heard that the Israelites conquered Jericho and the city of Ai when the Israelites conquered Canaan. Thus, the Gibeonites were afraid of the Israelites. They deceived Joshua and made an alliance with the Israelites. Later, their lies were revealed. Hence, they became woodcutters for the Israel, the altar of the Lord. They also became water carriers. The Gibeonites were foreigners, and yet 
because they served the temple, they were included in the list of the Israelites. This taught that even foreigners could participate in God's work and receive salvation. Verse 55 lists the ten families of the descendants of the servants of Solomon. The Nethanim were included here, which totaled 392 people. Many of the Nethanim and descendants of the servants of Solomon did not return. The Nethanim served in God's temple, but they were not able to flourish because they were not able to serve because there was no in Babylon. Many of the Nethanim did not return. Many of the descendants of the servants of Solomon did not return. The servants of Solomon were proud and had a sense of superiority that they were servants of the king in the past. Hence, they did not flourish and only a small number of them returned. Verse 59 lists the people who could not show that their families were from Israel. Here there are three normal families and there are three families of the priests. The leaders considered these people unclean. The priests were considered unclean until there was a priest ministering with the Urim and Thummim. Therefore, they were not allowed to eat of the most sacred food. The governor in verse 33 refers to Zerubbabel the governor. The Urim and Thummim were objects that the priests used to find God's will. The most sacred food were offerings that the God's people gave to God. The priests ate the most sacred food after the people offered it to God. If we do not have full understanding about the truth through today's passages, it means that God considers us detestable. Whoever stands between the truth and falsehood must not participate in God's work. Therefore, we must stand firm on God's word. In verses 64 to 60 are the of the servants and their livestock. When the Israelites returned from Babylon, they took with them many servants and livestock. The whole company numbered 42,360. This was the number of those who registered for the first return. <clears throat> However, the actual number of those who returned was 229, sorry, 29,818. 
it was the number of families listed in verses 3 to 63. There was a difference of 12,542. Among those who registered to return from Babylon were those who could not return because of different reason. Different reasons. Some probably did not return because it would take fun to Jerusalem. Some probably did not return because it would be difficult to move back to Jerusalem. They were moved by the Holy Spirit to return to Jerusalem, but some backed out because of physical thoughts. These people chased after temporary physical peace. Therefore, they were not able to participate in spiritual liberation and freedom and the movement of life. That is why we must not destroy the inspiration of the Holy Spirit when He moves us. We must immediately obey God's command. We must go to the place God promised us and we must participate in the spiritual movement of life. In verses 68 to 70, the exile turned things for the construction of the temple. From among those who returned from Babylon, the leaders focused on building the temple before building their own homes. In verse 69, the leaders offered 61,000 drachmas of gold. They also offered 5,000 minus of silver. They also offered 100 priestly garments. The leaders gave to God according to their abilities. They gave with joyful hearts. We too must give with joyful hearts when we give offerings to God. We must have the mindset of first building the temple before we build our own homes. We must give according to our abilities when we give offerings. Wholeheartedly give to God what He allowed us to have. Those who are financially powerful must give a lot. Those who have little can give little. God said that He demands much from those who have been given much. Those who have been given much from God, but give less sin by disobeying God. Luke chapter 12 verse 48 All the people of Israel returned. When the people returned, they settled in the towns of their forefathers. The majority of those who returned from Babylon were those who were born in Babylon. They returned to the land of their forefathers for the first time. Yet these people did not complain and they resided in the land of their forefathers. Here include the first picture 
on Ezra and Nehemiah. Thank you.